rare occurrence that those teams have gotten together. Unbelievably rare here, obviously, in the last uh, 20 years. As you guys mentioned, the last regular season meeting in 1994, last time they met overall was in the 2001 Sweet 16 in Anaheim. And there's basically an issue of where you would play this game because Maryland considers the Verizon Center, the Georgetown home court, even though you could look at that as more of a neutral court in Washington, D.C. Obviously, the Comcast Arena in College Park is Maryland's home court. Uh, when I spoke with Georgetown officials earlier today, if this were to occur, occur, they told me it has never been discussed in the last couple of years about setting up any kind of neutral court or home-and-home -home series with Maryland. So if this game happens on Sunday, it will be highly anticipated in the Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Maryland area as one of the games that they've all wanted to see for years and years between by far the two most recognizable programs in the area. Well, and uh, in, in the next home game really should go to Maryland because Maryland beat Georgetown in overtime in 1994 at the old Cap Center. <laughs> but uh, a lot of stubbornness, I can tell you that. Oh, it's a parts. home game from 94, huh, Coach? Uh, you know, you think back to the old days, couldn't find two more stubborn coaches than Lefty Drizelle and John Thompson. So two guys that uh, know how to defend their programs. But the missed opportunities through the years, when you think of all the great Georgetown and Maryland teams, that might be fun on Sunday. Zaga by 12. Dimitri Goodson, the freshman, handling. He could end up being a big factor for them. I know last year they were forced to play Fargo a lot of minutes. Shot clock expiring. Day gets it off. And it goes. The grit, the determination, Andy Katz talked about the need for toughness. That's what the Zag said before the game, and they've shown it at least so far. Look at the work down low, Stephen Gray and the foul. He'll shoot when we come back. Sparkling high definition on ESPN HD. Here at the Milk House Old Spice Classic. Part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's Gonzaga leading by 14 and the winner meets Tennessee Sunday 7:30 ESPN 2 and standing by with the Tennessee head coach is Andy Katz. Well thanks John we're not into projecting here the election is over so we're not going to call this game at all yet but looking ahead here Bruce you're scouting both teams so let's take Gonzaga because they're leading what kind of problems do the Zags propose for you. Well, their size. I mean, they really do a great job inside. Heifelt looks like he's getting back into form, uh, and and they uh, they've got great schemes. They can do things inside out. And Day's a really tough matchup. If it was Gonzaga, the Tyler Smith Day matchup would be exciting. The advantage for Gonzaga, they're getting a play against a Maryland team that I'm in the Gary Williams family with Dr. Tom Davidson. So the pressure and some of the things that they like to do. Um, we played Gonzaga in Seattle last year, so I think both teams are fairly familiar with one another. The Gonzaga staff told me that they really liked the way Maryland was scrappy coming here, but they had to match that scrappiness. How much have you seen that from the Zags here so far this game? Yeah, they've really picked it up physically. I don't think there's any question. It was, you know, one of the things that Mark talked about last year was, you know, getting his guys to continue to be more aggressive, more physical. And they have matched Maryland's intensity, and that's awfully hard to do. So they're formidable. I can see why people think they could be a Final Four team. Well, let's not give up on the Terps yet. If they were to mount a comeback, what kind of problems does Maryland propose if they are to come back? Well, I love Vasquez. Wow, is he good. I mean, he's really, he's special. Um, yeah, they probably Gary. Where you know where in the coaching box? Gary Williams versus Bruce Pearl. Are you kidding me? It's a no-brainer. My team's gonna be 15 points better. That's not to take anything away from Mark. Who sweats more though? Well, uh, he sweats more, but I'm a little more animated. <laughs> Back to you, John. <laughs> the perspiration breakdown. We'll have that coming up. The one through eight seedings here at the Milk House. Gonzaga leading by 15. Coach Fran, we got a chance to do that game in Seattle last year. We did, and Tennessee took it to Gonzaga, which if Gonzaga wins this game, it'll be an interesting opportunity to Mark Few from Mark Few to gauge how ready Gonzaga is for an aggressive team like Tennessee. Neal stepping in, Bolden though able to collect it back. And has it knocked away and a foul. 
At the Milk House, Disney's Wide World of Sports Complex, Lake Buena Vista. And number 10, Gonzaga taking on Maryland in the Old Spice Classic, part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. John Shambi, Fran Fraschilla, and Andy Katz, and there are the brackets. Tennessee awaits the winner of this one. ESPN 2, Sunday night, 7.30 Eastern, and if Maryland comes back or Gonzaga hangs on the win, we got a great, great final. Well, the thing both teams have to contend with with Tennessee is the fact that they are relentless, and they lost Juwan Smith, Ramar Smith, Chris Lofton from last year's team, but I think this team, John, actually can be better, not early, but later on in the year, it's a it's a team that Bruce Pearl can go 10 or 11 deep with. And uh, playing some really good freshmen, I think by mid-January, they're going to be a top five team, certainly at that level. Tennessee's got a lot of length, and they have guys who are big, long, and can step outside and shoot. And they never take a playoff, which is a credit to their coach. And there's Neal. Coming off that career game, the 17 against Michigan State. One of the things that Gonzaga has done very well tonight that I don't think Michigan State exploited last night was whether it's Cargo posting up or Bolden or the big guys like Sacre and Day and Heitfeld, they've really taken advantage of the opportunity to score near the lane tonight. And that uh, only will open up the perimeter game for the Zags. They got Bernie on the foul, Jerome Bernie's first. Sacre hits the front end of the one and one. It's 17 fouls on the Terps, four on Gonzaga. Day sits. You know, I'm trying to think. Obviously, North Carolina's got great offensive firepower because they get out and run and they got hands going inside, they got some shooting. Connecticut when they're at full strength with Kemba Walker playing so well and the inside tandem can hurt you inside offensively. You know, uh, but as I think of the best teams in the country on the offensive end, you know, there's not a lot of teams that can put seven guys, you know, on the floor, obviously five at a time, that can score like these guys can. Bolden aggressively to the rim, and there's another aspect of the offense. You focus so much on Pargo or Day or Heitfeld. Well, Bolden putting it on the floor. Largest lead for Gonzaga at 18. Now Bolden is a guy that averaged 13 points a game last year. Well, it started for the Zags back at 99 run to the final eight, but overall their program history, you see the the win totals and the NCAA tournament bids 11 overall, but it's 10 in a row. People think of Gonzaga, they think back to the early 80s and John Stockton. And then Dan Fitzgerald really got the program going. He was the guy that hired Mark Few and Billy Greer and Dan Munson. They were the three musketeers. And then when Dan Munson took over for, for, for Fitz, Dan left after 99 in the Elite Eight. Mark's taken the reins from Dan. And as we said last night, Mark Few's got one of the best jobs in college basketball. And Billy Greer now in what San Diego, correct? Yep. Yep. And he got the Toreros to the second round last year of the NCAA tournament, knocking off UConn. Well, it's got to start to chip away at the lead. Oh. Offensive foul. Yeah. Both Gray and Heitfeld trying to establish position. And Brian Kersey had the call. I don't know how many charges the Zags have taken tonight, but it's been more than a couple. But when you got the when you got guys that want to put their body on the line on the defensive end who are really good offensive players, it's going to make Mark Few feel really good. All right. Let's interrupt this offensive message board for a moment and talk defense because they beat Oklahoma State, the Zags did, and held them to 37% from the floor.